there are two types or two categories of doubt. So either the doubt enters upon a person within the salah, or the doubt enters upon a person after completing the act of worship. Whatever that act of worship is, whether it is wudu or whether it is salah, whatever the act of ibadah is, the doubt, it enters upon him after completing the act of ibadah. Any type of doubt which comes upon a person after completing the act of worship, even if it is a doubt which has reached 99% but not 100%, you don't turn to it, you completely ignore it. A person finishes praying salah and he has doubt whether in the fourth rak'ah he recited Surah Al-Fatiha. So the salah here, the salah here, it is valid and completely correct. And if he was to return and repeat the salah again, he's sinning. So Shaykh Ibrahim, he says, Allahu Akbar, he makes a takbir. And then shaitan comes to him. And then he puts a doubt in his mind, are you upon wudu? And he begins saying, I don't know. And he thinks, what do you think we should go back? So he should not go back and he should not entertain the doubt. Why? Because he only said the takbir upon wudu. And so... If he breaks the salah due to this paranoia from shaitan and he goes and repeats the wudu, then he is sinning. A person entered to make wudu and then after making wudu, he enters into the masjid and, and he begins to feel his head. Did I wipe over my head or not? But the wudu has finished. If he returns back and makes wudu and repeats it, then he's sinning. If a person made tawaf around the Kaaba seven times and then after this prayed two rak'ahs behind Maqam Ibrahim and then he goes to Mount Safa and then he says and he has a doubt that by Allah I have a 99% doubt that I only performed tawaf six times and not seven has the tawaf finished? yes you've completed the tawaf so if you now return back and make tawaf again then you are sinning a man came to a great scholar from amongst the a'imma he says oh imam I completely immerse myself in water, whether it's the sea or a river, I completely immerse myself in water. And then when I come out of the water, it seems that there's a small part on my body which is not wet. So what is upon me? The Sheikh said, don't pray. He said, why are you, uh, why are you telling me not to pray? Why are you removing the obligation of prayer from me? Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that the pen of blame and responsibility has been removed from three people and you are one of them. So any person who is suffering from this paranoia, you say to him that we have two choices or options for you. Either you abandon the paranoia or you abandon salah because you are majnoon. What do you want to choose? And so he should choose to abandon the paranoia. Why? Because he is a worshipper of Allah, not a worshipper of shaitan. So to summarize, any type of doubt which enters upon a person after having completed the act of worship, it is completely ignored unless it is yaqeen, certainty, 100% certainty. Then the second type of doubt is when the doubt enters upon a person within the act of worship. And this is two further types. Firstly, a person who is affected by many doubts, always going to sujood sahu what does this person do? He should completely ignore the doubts. If he doubts whether it is three or four rak'at, then he considers it to be four rak'at and there's no need for sujood sahu. Now, understood? Because this person, he's being affected by paranoia and through this, this paranoia will cease. And then you have the second category and that is somebody who every now and again may be affected by a doubt. For example, he says that perhaps one in a, once in a year, I have to make sujood sahu based upon a doubt. An Imam in Al Masjid al Nabawi al Sharif, and he has been an Imam leading the people for 40 years, and it has never been recorded that he has had to make sujood sahu. Why? Because he leaves the dunya outside. If a person has with him his phone, and throughout the salah the phone is ringing, how is he going to pray? No, he's not even able to sit. And as soon as he makes taslim, he begins checking his phone. The mobile is a big shaitan, except for the one whom Allah has mercy upon. Because these mobiles, they preoccupy you from Allah Azza wa Jal. Pray it on flight mode and pray. So this person who is not affected by doubts much, if he has a doubt whether he prayed three or four raka'at, we say to him, which one is a higher probability with you? We say to him, 
that if you think that the greater probability is that you have prayed four rak'at as opposed to three rak'at, consider it to be four rak'at and then make sujood the sahu. But if he thinks that the major probability is that he has prayed three rak'at and not four, and then we say to him, consider it to be three rak'at and then to pray the fourth one and then sujood the sahu. If, however, he says that neither one is more probable than the other,